Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Big Matt. I've been away for a couple of weeks. I uh, haven't posted any videos in a while, but getting back into the swing of things uh, this week. And today we're going to be looking at an Atari MX5050. Uh, it's a Mark III-8 a Mark uh, uh, reel-to-reel. Okay, so we're going to go over all the controls and indicators. We'll start with this unit. Uh, these are the VU meters for all eight channels uh, and the input uh, level controls. Uh, these are the SRL switches. Uh, they're called uh, standard reference level, meaning that you can adjust the input to where uh, when you have a... a a, uh, a measured input coming into the machine to calibrate it. Uh, you'll set it for 0 dB or plus 3, 3 dB or minus 3 dB or whatever. But that's going to be your standard uh, input. And when you press this button in, it's going to bring the input up to that level so it'll stay uh, consistent. When you move this lever out, then you can adjust the inputs uh, up or down this way. But for uh, most recordings, you can just leave it on the standard reference uh, level. Uh, these are your, this is your supply and uh, take up reel. This is your head block. It's a three head unit. Has the erase head, uh, record, and the playback head. Your, your tension arm. Uh, this is your cueing lever. Uh, when you're fast forwarding and uh, you want to hear what's on the tape at a fast speed so you can know when you're at the end of the song just press this lever down uh, you have your memory uh, digital counter and the reset button for the counter power switch this, this is your speed switch this unit can play at uh, either three and three quarters and seven and a half or seven and a half and fifteen inches per second controlled by this switch here uh, there's an internal switch at the rear of the machine that will convert it for, from three and three quarters and seven and a half to seven and a half and 15 inches per second, uh, respectively. Uh, this is for uh, large and small reels. Uh, this is your edit button. If you're playing a tape and you want to uh, cut part of the tape out, uh, when you press the edit, edit button and press play, the capstan will engage with a pinch roller. The tape will spill out, but the tape won't be taken up by the uh, by the take up reel. It'll spill out until the till it reaches the point where you want to uh, cut off that piece of tape. Press stop, and when you press stop, that uh, disengages the edit button. Uh, these controls are as simple to use as a cassette deck. You have record, play, uh, stop, rewind, and fast forward. Uh, pinch roller, capstan. This is a a uh, little tape guide and the the tension roller. Moving down below, this is a built-in test generator. Te I mean, excuse me, test tone oscillator. You have a one kilohertz tone that can be sent to the uh, to the machine, and also a ten thousand hertz tone that can also be sent to the uh, sent to the machine. Uh, this button is a uh, used when you want to use external control to control the inputs and outputs of the unit uh, which, which you want to monitor from the unit the all input means that uh, all you're going to be monitoring the input on all eight channels and all select uh, repro is a uh, it's going to be that that uh, the SRL, the standard reference level uh, on the output for all eight channels when you're in playback. Or you can put it in all repro and uh, it's going to uh, play back all the channels and you'll be able to, uh, uh, it, it'll play uh, whatever level is recorded onto that, uh, that channel. And lastly is the individual. That means you can uh, change them from a from a, a input to select repro or to input repro. This is the in this position you can control each channel uh, individually. If you select any of the other ones, 
all the all the units are going to be in the uh, position that this that coordinates with the uh, with this uh, switch that you selected. Okay, and uh, this is your record. These are your record ready uh, or safe position switches. When they're all down, that means they're in the safe position. The unit's not going to go into record. If you lift one of them up, the record button will the record indicator will flash. When you press record and play, you'll be recording on channel one. Uh, if you move a few of them up, uh, those are going to it's going to be recording on channels one through four and so on. Okay, these are your headphone uh, monitoring selector switches. You can monitor one, one or up to all eight channels at a time. This is the output to your headphones, and this is the level that you're going to be uh, sending out to the headphones. Okay, moving around to the uh, rear of the machine. Uh, one of the things that uh, really stands out about the Atari units is the, their access to bias and level controls on the unit. You don't have to remove any panels to get to those adjustments. Uh, for this Dash 8, uh, all of the adjustments on the rear of the machine, uh, just get a small uh, screwdriver and you're able to align any of the channels uh, that you like. If you want to increase the bias on a certain channel, very simple to do in here. But you have the uh, your peak level adjustments for your meters, your output levels, uh, you can have the, them on low or high by just flipping a switch. Uh, repro levels, that's the playback levels. You can adjust the EQ and uh, this is that uh, select, that uh, uh, standard reference uh, level adjustments. Uh, record level adjustments and EQ. Uh, just all, all the adjustments that would normally uh, be beneath the, the uh, lower panel on most machines that you'd have to take a, a piece of the, uh, the deck apart to get to is all those adjustments are readily available here on the, the rear of the Atari. Next thing we're going to do is uh, check out the record function on the unit. We're going to use the built-in oscillator to do that. We're going to uh, check channels 1 and 2, uh, 3 and 4. Five and six, and lastly seven and eight. We're going to monitor the <clears throat> that test tone as it's being recorded through the headphone jacks. I have the headphone jacks connected to a Bluetooth transmitter. That transmitter is sending the signal over to the Pioneer system you see in the rear. And so when I go into uh, when I put the one thousand hertz tone uh, in the on position, we can hear tracks one and two. Uh, and see the the meters. Uh, there's they're at zero dB right now. And so uh, next thing we're going to do is start recording that signal onto tracks one and two. First, we need to put uh, tracks one and two into record mode or ready mode. We'll see the record light flash and also the ready lights flash on channels one and two. And we have one and two selected. Uh, at the at the uh, headphone jacks, so we're going to begin recording, and that's what's going on to the tape. And when we press repro, we're going to hear the actual recording itself. Okay, and we can see that the VU meters stay at uh, zero dB. If we wanted to drop the, that signal down a little bit, we would uh, press the SRL button. And you see the view meters go down a little bit. If we wanted to bring them back up manually, we would turn the input knobs up slightly. And if we wanted to reach uh, right at zero dB, we would just press. The, you can move them up with the with the uh, input knobs, but just press the SRL and it'll bring it back up to zero dB. Okay, that's channels one and two. Now we're going to switch it over to tracks uh, three and four. Turn off one and two. And that was a previous recording on channels one and two. Now we're going to go over to three and four and begin recording 
uh, there. Okay, and I've got to select three and four. And we'll see the, the view meter stay at, let's see, they stay at zero dB. Okay, and the reason we can hear the, uh, I accidentally hit the stop switch, but the reason we can still hear the, uh, the tone, even though we're in the repro mode, is because if, if we've got tracks three and four in the ready mode, it automatically moves the imp, moves the signal to the input uh, section. Once we go into record, we'll be li it'll move back down to the repro selection. We hear what's actually playing on the tape. So we'll go ahead and do that, and we'll put it into all inputs. And so we're monitoring what's going on to channels or tracks three and four. Make sure tracks three and four are selected. Now we're going to go into repro, and uh, we'll hear what's actually going on to the tape. Again, three and four are the only ones we're concerned with now because those are the only ones that are being recorded. All this other movement on the VU meters is what's already recorded onto the tape. Okay, and, and the SRL will move the signal up and down on either channel. Okay, and then we're going to move over to channels 5 and 6. Okay, and we'll go into record mode. And that's what's going on to the tape. I have to deselect 3 and 4 and select 5 and 6 on the headphones. And we're monitoring uh, tracks five and six, and they're both at uh, zero dB. Okay, next, we're going to go into uh, tracks seven and eight. Seven and eight, and we'll select seven and eight on the headphones. And you can see we're at uh, 0 dB. We want to have the signal drop down some. Let's press SRL. We want to go back up to 0 dB. You can either turn the knob or press the button. It'll go back up to 0 dB. Next, we're going to begin recording from a Revox reel-to-reel -reel onto the uh, Atari. We'll start with channels 1 and 2. Right now we're monitoring those two, uh, those two channels. Again, this is channel one and two. We're listening to uh, the input. I'm gonna put the unit into record mode. And right now we're recording on channels one and two. That's what's going on to the tape, and that's the actual repro. Get us on channels one and two. I'm just skipping over two channels at a time so we can uh, just make sure that all eight channels are recording. And we're going to adjust the, ma the inputs manually. Okay, that's uh, channel one and two. Move it over to channels three and four. Put it into record mode. Okay, that's what's going on. Well, that's the actual recording. This is what's going on to the tape. Then this is the actual recording. Again, it's on channels three and four. Now we're going to go up to channels five and six.
put it in record mode. That's what's going on with the tape. And that's the actual recording on channels five and six. Now we're going to channel seven and eight. That's, that's what's going on with the tape. We were listening to channels 5 and 6 also. So right now this is channel 7 and 8. That's the input. And that's the actual uh, recording. Again, before I had channels five and six monitoring also, and that's what was previously recorded on channels five and six. <clears throat> I'm going to go back and listen to those <clears throat> those four recordings on those uh, two channels at a time, starting with tracks one and two. Uh, again, we've already listened to them. As they've been recording now just re rewound the tape back to the starting point i'm going to listen to all uh eight channels in sequence starting off the channels one and two Channels five and six. Now we're going to listen to channel seven and eight. through the fast forward rewind function. I'm going to fast forward. Again, this is the Atari MX5050 Mark 3 8 reel to reel.